About me, uh, I feel as though I'm more of a, I'm more than a barber. I'm a businessman and a father. Like I'm a father first, businessman second. A barber, eh, you know, like I cut hair, but I feel as though I, I surpassed the barber level. Like I feel like a barber is just a guy that sits behind a chair or stand behind a chair. And I, I feel like I do so much more than that. So uh, I might say scoot the barber, but like in my mind, I'm further than that. Like I'm way further than just being a barber. My name is Daquan Mitchell. That's my real name, but my my uh my other name is Scoot the Barber. That's what people know me as. People come in here call me Scoot. I've been barbering for 13 years, but I I've been in this exact barbershop since I was 14. I'm 30. I started sweeping hair here, the Zach Zach Barbershop at 14. Started cutting at 17. Started owning at 26, and I'm 30. So yeah, that's like that's like the origins. That's why like everything I do, everything I know is just barber. Like I never really had like a real real job. Like barber had been everything I've been doing my whole life. So like I never really got a paycheck before. Like everything was just straight barber. Crazy, right? <laughs> so that's that's why I just love the barber game so much. Like it's all I know. Like every time I talk to somebody, it'd be weird because I. I'll bring up like regular things, like at least I perceive as regular because I've been barber my whole life. Like um, I was talking to my homie, he works at uh, Key Bank. And I'm like, yo, uh, how often do you go to the bank? He was like, I don't go to the bank at all. I said, really? I go to the bank like every day. And then he was like, no. Like, and then I, I started thinking back. I'm like, that's why every time I go to the bank, they know my name. Even if I go like once a month or I go two months, they be like, oh, how you been, Mr. Mitchell? I'm like, why do they remember me if they get so many people? But then once he was like, nobody really go to the bank. I'm like, oh. Okay, but I'm so used to being a barber. Like you get cash every day, you go to the bank every day. Like it's regular to me, routine. I've been doing it since I was 14. <laughs> so it just became a thing my whole life. So yeah, I've been barber for 13 years professionally. A lot of people will perceive me as, oh man, he got it handed to him. He never worked hard. No, <laughs> I used to come here every day when I was, when I was 14, the owner of this barbershop used to bring me here on Saturdays at five in the morning. Yeah, like, so I used to sweep hair for him Five in the morning until about three, four in the afternoon. All day, just sweet hair. Did you know him? Yeah, uh, actually he was a pastor at my church. So one day I told him, I'm like, yo, um, I want to get a job. Can I sweep hair at the barbershop? He said, yeah, then I'm here now. <laughs> so I've been here my whole life, literally. So yeah, took over the shop that I, uh, that I grew up in. That's amazing. Yeah, like, so that's why I, like, I damn near know like, everybody in the community because I've been here my whole life. What do you focus on? that people may not know whenever they come into the shop? Um, like me personally, like I, uh, I'm more so focused on like uh, honing on my craft a lot more. Like um, something I tell a lot of young barbers, like don't get too comfortable. Always get out your comfort zone. Try your hardest to uh, be the best barber you can. Like I, not to toot my own horn, but I believe I'm a phenomenal barber. So now at this point, it's just like little details. Like, it, like a fade might look perfect to you, but then it's like, now, the difference between a $20 barber and a $40 barber is the details. Like, you might be able to cut your ass off, but now it's the little things. Like, I'm gonna go on a little tangent also again, but like, when it comes to cutting hair, I, uh, I, I, I prep it different. Like, like I told you before, I come an hour early before my first person. So, my first person is normally at nine, I come at eight. I, I prepare myself because a lot of barbers, that's where they mess up at time. People don't treat the barbershop like a business, they treat it like a hustle. I run mine like a business. Like I said, the difference between 20 and 40. You pay 40 for me because I'm gonna be on time, you're gonna get a good haircut. You, you ain't gotta worry about me not being here. You ain't never gonna see, oh man, Scoot in jail. No, I don't do that. Like, I hear it all the time where Scoot don't listen. That's something else that people don't do. You ask for wide beard, somebody give you a chin strap. I didn't ask for that. <laughs> I say keep my beard as wide as possible. So it's like little stuff like that that like deciphers me and other barbers. Like, I, um, yeah, it's just paying attention to every piece of detail. And uh, always remember, like, you're just not just a barber, you're a therapist. So, like, you talk to people every day, like, it's, the, it's weird the variety of people we get in here. Like, I tell people all the time, I know somebody for everything. I know somebody that, I know somebody that fix cars. I know somebody that steal cars. I know somebody that's, no, seriously, like, I know lawyers. I know crackheads. Like, it's like every spectrum. Like, we know everything. Like, we know about something that happened, like, like we on the streets, but we, we not even in the streets. Like people would divulge information to us that like you would never think somebody would divulge information. And I personally ask any question because people allow me to. 
Like I, I literally ask any question and it's crazy. Uh, when people come to me, they get the sharp image experience. Now, what does that entail? Everything. Like uh, you get great conversation, you get a great haircut, and you and you don't gotta worry about anything crazy happening in, in the barbershop. Like you don't gotta worry about somebody coming in here having a fight. You don't gotta worry about people cussing in here. Like it's a family environment, so you get like all of the above. My nickname is Scooter. When I was a kid, I used to scoot on my butt, and then my sister went to every every school I went to. So every time she called me in the hallway, Scooter, Scooter, Scooter. Teachers called me it. Like so, if one person call you it, now if we go to the same school, everybody call you Scooter. So. It just followed me the rest of my life. Like in, in church, the pastor, he called me Scoop. So then it went, everybody called me Scoop. Like if he call you it, everybody gonna call you it. So then there go the nickname. <laughs> so that's why I was Scoop. I used to just scoot on my butt. So I just took Scooter away, then just went with Scoop. Make sure y'all come to 3122 Main Street, Sharp Image, Scoop the Barber, Talk Docs, and Josh, AKA Bump. Come check us out.